And so as we continue, um, I've tweaked some of the planks at the back over here as well and extended one extra little support that looks pretty much exactly like this one except for extended a little bit higher. Right, so going from here I would like to address a few extra things, uh, little props and things that we can have a look in the reference. I'm going to bring this up in a full view so I can show you guys what I mean. We have little triangles over here that is quite simple to make. Uh, we can address that. Uh, and then we have some maybe some grass blades over here. We can refine some of these props that we have in our existing scene and we can maybe uh, start looking at detailing some of the inner objects inside of this uh, little hut um, or shack. Um, further, further we can tweak some of the details on the wheel and um, then we have a look at some other things later on. Let's see how far we can get. I keep my reference off screen. You guys can have a look at the, the screen on screen display reference and we can go from there. Right, so let's, uh, let's start looking at detailing these little props on the pillar, the support beam over here. And it's quite simple. If we look at the reference again, it's looking like some sort of a metal arrow and with a stud or something on the inside. Let's have a look how we can address that. Uh, a tool of choice that I would like to use is going to be inside of the modeling toolkit. So if you open up the modeling toolkit, we can see that there is a tool called Quad Draw. Um, we can either use this, an older version of Maya. You guys might have to use something like um, the Append to Polygon tool or even the Create Polygon tool. These are all alternatives to what I will be using. So in the Quad Draw tool, if you have nothing selected, it will just immediately create a brand new shape object. And usually you will be drawing this on the grid. So if I click anywhere on the grid, they will stick to the grid plane. And we can then use these points as vertex points. And as you can see, I'm literally just moving these points around, rearranging them the way I want. In the uh, little help menu, there's a key uh, keyboard and mouse shortcuts. You can have a look here for any specific options that you would like, but I'll quickly run through some of these. So as I cl left click, I'm just adding new points. For holding down shift, Maya will then allow me to bridge or connect these faces together. And if I hold down control and shift, or rather, uh, let's see, control and shift. Yeah, control and shift gives us the option to take away some of these vertex points. At the moment they're not yet vertex points, they're literally just drawn on screen and they will become something as soon as you connect them with an existing um, other points. So I've got four points connected. I'm going to hold down shift and I'll click on it and that's going to create my first face. Now we can either tweak the face position, the corner points, and or the edges as well. So it seems like it's a very simple design. I'm just going to draw them out one by one. And let's place those two quite close together. And we've now created a simple plane. It's not perfectly straight, uh, but it's the building blocks to what we can use for our arrow. Um, once I'm done with the quad draw, I can exit out of it and that will bring me back to the final shape object. You can have in the outliner, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the stack, it's now called polysurface79. If you feel like you want to straighten some of the edges, by all means you can do so. And I'm just going to grab these edges, pull them, flatten them, and once I have those, I'm going to readjust, realign these guys. So we have a nicer, cleaner looking object. I'm just going to jump to my four pane view, to my top view, hit F to frame that, and then we can snap these points 
a little bit nicer to the grid, which will give us more control over the shape. Let's um, use the actual grid lines as, an, as a guide to see how far we need to adjust these. Same thing with this one, I'm going to snap that in there. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So that needs to be adjusted to about there for halfway mark. And if you want to be more precise, I guess you could split this in half, straighten this, and then delete one half. And then we can use the mirror tools in the mesh options to mirror this across. Now you choose your axes through this on-screen display and you can just choose whichever axis you want to mirror this across. In this case it's supposed to be the minus Z and now we have a perfectly straight um, arrow. So once I have that I can then go ahead and maybe do a bevel on it or even just take the outer edges. I do see however this is not perfectly attached so we have to keep that in mind. That means the vertices were not merged when we used the mirror geometry tool. And that could simply be the fact that this object wasn't created in the center of the world, thus the threshold is not centered to that axis. It's a quick fix. We can just select those points and we can go to our edit mesh and we can say merge and that will merge them. Another shortcut would be shift right click and then go to merge vertices and then choose merge vertices again. And that's a very quick way of fixing that. So once I have this, I'm then gonna go back to edge mode, select the corners. I'm gonna do a quick extrude on it, pull it down and I can use the uh, offset to pull this out to give it a bit of an offset profile. And maybe like that would be a good value. Once I'm done, I could use this then to anchor to that profile over there. This is at the moment just a single sided object. If you do want to fill it up and make it a double thick object you can by all means. Just need to keep in mind later on you need to optimize your mesh to reduce the poly count for your final model. So this object will then fit in there and obviously the scale is not correct yet. Also the center pivot needs to be aligned to the object and then we can go ahead and align that. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to move this out. I'm going to snap my pivot handle to one of the vertices. I'm going to hold down D. I'm going to click on a single vertex. It's going to reorient itself. And then what I'm going to do is hold down V for vertex snap. Um, and then I can click and drag this and then align it to one of those edges. If you can't see the edges and it's difficult for you, especially for beginners, by all means you can go ahead and turn on wireframe on shaded and that will give you an exact um, placement of those edges so it's easier to visualize. And then from there we can go ahead, use your scale tool, shrink it down. Again, if you forgot where the tools are, it's in the toolbox on the left hand side. Frame that a little bit smaller about there, maybe even more because it's not fitting in yet. I'm going to snap it to this corner, in fact, realign that to the center, and then we can rotate that downwards. Once I have that, I can then go grab these faces and then maybe snap its pivot to that center vertex and we can rotate that down until that is lining up with the surface. Finally, we have a bit of a spacing here. I'm gonna grab the loop selection and I'm gonna pull this down and anchor that there. And the same thing with this one as well. And now we have a successful placement for that metal uh, detail and we can replicate that same shape at the bottom of that pillar as well. I do feel however we need to do some adjustments like we 
technically don't need to use these faces at the back. So I can either delete them, which I am going to do, or we can just flatten it and then delete them afterwards. It's all just different workflows. I like teaching a free flow, free form kind of workflow because I don't like to be constrained to tools. I like to jump around between different tools for different reasons. They all end up giving you more or less the same result. You just need to feel more comfortable with whatever you're working with. I'm going to push that in there so it looks like it's part of the same metal beam. And I'm going to also try and get it to be the same thickness as well. So it looks like it's part of the same uh, profile. Um, if we have a look here, there's a bit of a spacing in between. And I can now then just pull this straight up. Um, or I could individually tweak the vertices to kind of get them aligned. But that should be a pretty good base for what we want. Excellent. Once I have that, I can then go ahead and duplicate this. And I'm going to pull this down. And we might want to straighten this profile out once again. So let's see if we can do that in an easy way. I'm going to frame on the selected edge, which makes my pivot of the camera align to that. And I'm going to grab the faces once again, or even the, the vertices. Snap that over there. And then I'm going to rotate this. Okay, that looks pretty clean. And let's see how that aligns with our object. I'm going to rotate this, um, maybe go to the channel box, maybe zero out our rotations to get that straight again. And if we jump to the side view, we can see that this object is definitely not perfectly straight. So we can just fix that by grabbing the top faces. And if you don't see the dots, make sure you go to your settings, plugin manager, and then, oops, not plugin manager. We can go to preferences, go to our selection and make sure we have the selection of the faces set to the center, which will then give us the center dots. And then it's much easier to click and drag over these dots and then use our scale tool to flatten this out. Same thing goes for the bottom edges. I want to quickly grab those guys and straighten them as well. Scale, bring this up. Should be good. Back piece, I'm going to flatten out. And let's have a look. That looks good. Very nice and clean. And I'm going to modify, say, to the pivot. And then use my J hotkey on the keyboard to do incremental snapping until it reaches a 90 degree rotation. And I'm going to repeat the same thing to rotate it 180 degrees in the opposite direction. There we go. Then I'm just going to jump to my top view, hit F to frame that, pull out until I see what I'm looking at. And what I want to do is I want to align it to this pillar uh, that we have over here. It's more or less there. I can manually control the last bit of tweaks over here. Pull this down a lot more. Get it nicely aligned to that bottom piece and push it right up against that panel. There we go. That's looking good. I'm happy with what it looks like. I'm now going to create a little stud in the middle um, the metal um, rivets, if you want to call it that. And I'm simply going to use a diamond shape. And I'm going to bring this diamond shape into view. I'm going to hit F to frame it. And we can see that we have an extra face that we don't need, which I will get rid of by deleting that. I'm going to grab my rivet then. I'm going to scale it up a tiny bit, move it into position and align it to that vertex. A simple way to do that is just by aligning our pivot to that top vertex 
we can then do a V for vertex snap, click, left click and drag, and then move our mouse point to that vertex that we want to snap. And then we need to rotate this 90 degrees until it aligns to the surface. And then all we have to do is take our object, freeze transform it, and then change the scale along its uh, Y axis to be minus one. So if we do a modify, freeze transform, and then look at our orientation, we can see the scale needs to go this way. And so if we type in minus one, it will maintain the proportions of the object. Oops, that's not the right direction. It's gonna be probably the Z scale. It seems like it's the X scale. Let's try that. Minus one, there we go. And we can just pull this out until that aligns with the surface. It is sticking out a bit too much. We will flatten that point. And then I will also make this object a little bit smaller as well. So I'm gonna do a modify uh, center pivot, flatten it. Let's have a look. It's a bit too big. There we go. And push that in. Excellent. I'm going to duplicate this object and I will do the same thing here at the top. Move that up. Rotate. And we can align that over there. Now, because this is at an angle, if you want, you can go and grab these points and just push them down further until they align with the underlying surface. So we have a ribbon that's at an angle. Excellent, that's looking good. I'm happy with that. I can then go and proceed to the next step. Uh, I would like to grab my reference plane, just pull this up a little bit using my Y offset, middle mouse click and drag upwards so we can see more of what we're looking at. And I think what we're going to do is bring my display layer for these props up in view and see how we can address some of these extra details like this little pot. I'm going to add an extra handle to it. It's going to be a very simple shape extrusion. Um, we can either take some of the existing faces and keep it part of the same object, but um, I have a feeling that this might be a wooden cup, the metal arm. Um, so we can tweak that accordingly. So I'm going to show you guys a very neat little trick. It's actually making use of the paint effects and the paint effects with a curve that allows us to draw the profile. So let's have a look at how we can do this. First of all, we are going to choose to go to Window, General Editors, and then Visor. And within the visor, we have a collection of pre-made objects that we can make use of. And some of these are useful, some of them are absolutely non-usable at all. And what I'm going to focus on is just the default paintbrush in the Airbrushes profile. And the reason why is because it displays as a black shape or black colored object and we don't have any of these additional textures once we convert this into polygon surface. So I'm going to choose that as my default brush. I'm going to say apply brush to selected stroke and at the moment we don't have a stroke um, or a curve to draw this on which means if we just do this we're going to get a curve with the actual subdivisions already applied to it. I want to be a lot more accurate with my drawing so I won't be doing this. I will be doing this purely through a uh, curve based kind of workflow. I'm going to go to create curve tools and then I'm going to be using the either the CV curve or the EP curve. Uh, let's start with the CV curve. In the options of the CV curve you want to make sure that this is set to linear because it gives you a more accurate representation of where the the edge loops will be 
within our uh, paint effect stroke. I will then jump to my side view and let's first of all frame this in both the front and side and hit F to frame that, F to frame that. If you want to isolate that in the views, remember that hotkey control one. Excellent. So I'm just going to jump back to the tool and then I will grab it. Um, and then we can go and place our control points. And you can see at the moment the curve is not showing, it's because it's isolated. So if we hit control one again, you can see the actual control points. So I'm gonna be a little bit more accurate with this. Something like that. I don't want too many subdivision points. Something very simple, something basic. I'm gonna hit enter. And after the fact, you can still go and adjust these points to your liking. So let's do that. Grab these guys, place them there. Right, I think I'm happy with the overall shape. I'm going to hit um, F8 and that will go back to object mode. And then once I have the curve selected, I can then go ahead and in the rendering menu set, uh, I think it's rendering menu set, could be effects. We're looking for, could even be modeling. Yes, modeling, generate, and then we have our paint effect section. And here we can say apply settings to last stroke or apply settings to selected stroke. And what that will do is Let's first have a look before we do that. Just want to have a look at my perspective view. This is obviously not aligned. So we definitely want to go ahead and center pivot, drag this into view, maybe even grid snap that, or vertex snap rather. Perfect, that's what I want. And then from there, go back, generate, and the tool that I'm looking for is going to be curve utilities and then attach brush to curves. Now it will remember the brush that we used previously or the one that we actually selected in the, in the visor, which will be that default stroke. And you can see then it goes ahead and applies the actual subdivisions according to that object. Now there's a lot of in-between subdivisions and we can uh, tweak some of those settings according to our stroke options within our attribute editor. You will see that there's now two new um, tabs here at the top. The first one is going to be the stroke related options. So we can like reduce the quality if you want. And uh, we have the option of increasing and decreasing the density. And obviously if you can bring this down to the exact in between sections, this reduces the amount of polygons that is being used. So that's quite a nice setting that we can play with. And alternatively, there is options for, um, you know, when this mesh is going to be converted to polygons, you can use this at your, um, to your disposal to tweak some of those um, settings, how it's going to be converted to polygons. Furthermore, um, I will be setting this to a mesh preview because this will be a mesh in any case. And if we go to the brush profile, we can see that there's a brush width and that's going to allow us to thicken this up a little bit. We have options to make it a flat piece. If you feel like you want to make a flat piece, um, which I will not, I will just make it maybe slightly thinner, just not completely flat. And then we have things like the twist function to rotate this around the axes to kind of align it to our preference. Then we have uh, the tube sections, and that is the amount of sections that is being used to wrap around the object. For now, I'm going to keep this at four. That gives me an even subdivision. If we could use five, that gives us one extra at the bottom or even six like we had previously. 
for now, I'm just going to stick with what we have here. This will be plain T for what we need. Uh, I'm going to go up again. I'm going to play with the brush profile width a little bit more. And I'm happy with that. And we won't be able to remove the in-between sections uh, right off the bat unless we maybe play with the this sample density. Let's try 0 0.2. There we go. 0 0.2 works pretty good. I'm happy with the result. Now, finally, all we have to do is take our stroke and then convert the paint fix to a polygon surface. And if we open up the options, you'll see that this option looks pretty much identical to what we have inside of the um, mesh window. It's got more or less the same attributes. And all we have to do is just say output quads. We don't want any vertex color or information there. I'm just going to hit uh, apply. And what that will do is actually convert this object to a polygon surface, which we'll see there. There's our paint effect stroke, or rather the mesh that's been converted from the paint effect stroke. And finally, we can select that mesh. We can clear its history because we don't want to keep that attached. And we don't need this horrible shader that's assigned to it. I'll just switch that back to maybe the old Lambert that we had. And that will give us a pretty good base object. I will also harden the normals, which we will find under the mesh display. And I'm going to set this to harden edges. Perfect. Finally, we can do the last bit of tweaking just by grabbing these points and adjusting them according to our needs. I'm going to grab all of these. I feel like this needs to be like a high profile, something like that. Bring this down, maybe. Make sure you only select what you need. Something like that should be pretty good. Happy with that. Excellent. Right, now that we have all of these, we'll then go ahead and call this one done. I'm going to delete the old curve. I don't need that anymore. And I'm just going to keep it as is. You could, if you want, especially because it's going to be viewed from a distance, make an adjustment so that this is not so thin, I feel like it might be still a bit on the thin side. So we can use the transform component in the shift right click menu to then pull along the Z axis, which in this case is the blue direction. Pull this out, make it nice and thick. So we have to remember this will be viewed from a distance. And same thing over here. I'm going to get these stuck in here. Maybe space these out a little bit more. That seems to be more interesting as well. Excellent. I'm liking what we have here. And I'll call this one done. I'll then go ahead and combine these two shapes. Just by going to Mesh, Combine. And then we can use the Modify Center Pivot to realign these accordingly. Like that. Wonderful. I'm going to rotate this as well and push this down. Excellent. Right guys, um, I'm going to stop the video here and I'm going to create a brand new video continuing some of it with the more specific details. I think we've gone almost an hour now. So I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.